Well, kids bring a lot of joy into our world because they see the world through fresh eyes, hence the song we just enjoyed. It's part of why I love uh, greeting families out front, particularly on a weekend like last Sunday where the kids get to wear pajamas to church and just a simple thing like wearing their pajamas to church brought all kinds of joy and smiles. It's why I love when I uh, walk in during the week and kids are heading in through the preschool There's so much excitement just when they walk up and they punch the automatic door button and the door magically opens once again and they do it day after day after day. You know, and it's not just kids, but babies bring us a lot of joy as well. In fact, I was talking with Terry McVeigh, our kids pastor that was just up here a couple of minutes ago. And she was talking about the joy that she experienced as she got to meet a friend's baby for the first time, and she got to hold that baby and smell that baby, and she talked about that new baby smell. Now, I have to admit, when she said that, I laughed because, you know, I'm familiar with new car smell, but new baby smell, the only thing I think of, I think of something different when I think of babies and smell, but apparently it's a thing, and it's true there's joy that babies bring into our world. And that may have been part of why Mary experienced joy in response to the angel's announcement to her. But I also think that there was more going on. There was something deeper. There was joy because of what that baby would represent. And when we think about Christmas, when we look at the nativity, yes, we love and we celebrate baby Jesus But in a world full of darkness and difficulty, we need more than a babe in a manger. And to reflect on that, we're going to look at a character from the Christmas story, one that's not typically thought of as being in the Christmas story. In fact, this is a character that I don't know that I've ever seen in a nativity scene like the one on the screen above. You know, these are pictures that we might have around our house, or some people have a nativity scene in their front yard, or we had... Uh, We always had one around, and sometimes the kids would act out the Christmas story. And it's there's typically Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus and the shepherds and probably some animals. And then there's the wise men. Now, the reality is a nativity scene is often kind of a composite. It, It includes pieces of the Christmas story from kind of different time segments. Because the wise men didn't show up in the story till about a year and a half later. But there was a character who was there much closer to Jesus' birth, and he had some important things to tell us and remind us about this baby Jesus. And Mary and Joseph meet him when they leave Jerusalem and they head down towards Bethlehem. And they do what all good Jewish parents do, is they head to the temple uh, within about six weeks of the birth of a new child, and they go there to offer the sacrifice. And it's there that they meet Simeon, and we're going to meet him in the Gospel of Luke chapter 2. And the words uh, will be on the screen. But even though they meet Simeon in the temple, he's not a priest. He's a common man with some uncommon things that we'll see from the scriptures. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout, and he was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and it revealed to him that he would not die until he'd seen the Lord's Messiah. So there's a couple of things that we learn about Simeon out of the gate. We learn that he was serious about his faith and following God. And he was waiting for this Messiah who would rescue Israel. Now, Messiah means anointed one. And when the Jews would commission a new king or a new high priest, they would pour olive oil over his head. And I know that sounds a little strange to us, but it was a picture, it was a symbolic picture of God's blessing. And the prophets of Israel had been speaking for hundreds and hundreds of years about this Messiah, this deliverer, this savior, this king that would restore their nation. And there were many prophecies from a variety of Jewish prophets. And their prophecies were usually just brief descriptions of who this Messiah would be and what he would come to accomplish. But, you know, looking for a Messiah is a little bit like when we go to an airport or we meet somebody that we've never met at a restaurant and we might have a few words of description, but we've never seen them or we haven't seen their picture. 
and we're looking, is that the one? Is that the one? But Simeon didn't just have the words of the prophets. He had this unusual relationship with the Holy Spirit. And God's Spirit had told him that he would get to see the Messiah before he died. And so that day that he was led into the temple, I wonder if he had the sense that he was going to meet the Messiah, or I wonder if he was simply being obedient to a prompting that God's Spirit had for him. But as we continue in the Gospel of Luke, that day the Spirit led him to the temple, So when Mary and Joseph came to present baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took this child in his arms and he praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. For I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations. He's the glory of your people, Israel. And I imagine the joy that Simeon felt after waiting for years and years and years. And you know, this weekend as I was reflecting, or this week as I was reflecting on this story, I realized that we actually have a picture in our home. uh, And it's, it's up in a location that I don't regularly see it, but I took a picture of it. And this is a print Susie and I bought a couple of years ago. But imagine Simeon taking baby Jesus in his arms And reflecting that this little one was going to be his salvation and the salvation of his people and eventually the salvation of the whole world. And I'm sure that Mary and Joseph were more than a little startled when this stranger walked up to them and took their newborn baby in his arms. But they were even more surprised by the things he said about baby Jesus. And it's not surprising because Simeon knew the words of the prophets that part of what he spoke were words from the prophet Isaiah. You see, when he said that Jesus would be a light to the nations, it's from Isaiah 49, 6, and it's part of one of those messianic prophecies, a prophecy that says that Jesus will come to rescue everyone, not just the nation of Israel. You see, even though Isaiah lived almost 600 years before Simeon, his situation and Simeon's were very similar. Both lived under the oppression of a foreign nation. For Isaiah, it was the Assyrians. And for Simeon, it was the Romans. And for both men, they longed for a better world, a different world. And both of them anticipated the Messiah's coming, but they anticipated in different ways. You see, for Isaiah, he heard the words from God and he spoke them to others and he recorded them so that others like Simeon could anticipate. And when times were dark, they could remember God's promises. They could remember that there was hope and light that was eventually coming into the world. And while Simeon was holding baby Jesus, I wondered if some of the other words from Isaiah came to his mind. Words like Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, that said, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who walk in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. Or a few verses later in the scroll where it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end, and he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. You see, friends, this prophecy starts with a baby, but it ends with a king. And this prophecy speaks to four royal titles that he says that the Messiah will have. Wonderful counselor, which speaks to his Uh, amazing and incredible wisdom. Mighty God, it speaks to his strength. And then the next two titles speak to what the Messiah will accomplish in this world. He'll be an everlasting father that cares for his people. And then this last phrase, prince, prince of peace, can be translated prince of wholeness. He'll bring peace and wholeness into this world. You see, when you're in a difficult place like Isaiah or Simeon, you need someone who's more than a baby. In a world full of corrupt nations, in a world full of sin and darkness, you need a Messiah who will come and rescue you. 
And I do wonder what Simeon thought and why he so eagerly anticipated and watched the Messiah and longed for the rescue. I wonder if it was the oppression of the Romans or maybe the injustice that he saw among his own people as the rulers of the people fought amongst themselves for power and as the rich oppressed the poor. And I'm sure that there were even moments when he recognized the darkness in his own heart. It was probably all of those things coupled with this vision from the prophets, along with an imagination and a heart that was enlivened, that was enlivened by God's Holy Spirit. And while Simeon celebrates the birth of this baby, he also celebrates who Jesus is and what he's going to accomplish as king. You see, Simeon and the people of that time, they needed more than a baby in a manger. They needed a king who would save them, a defender who would protect them, and one who would accomplish more than they could accomplish for themselves. And the truth is, so do we. So who are you looking for this Christmas? Since at least the 6th century, the Christian church has been celebrated, celebrating what's called Advent, which in Latin means the arrival or the approach. And in Advent, we're invited to celebrate Christ's arrival, and we're invited to prepare our hearts once again. And as writer and this one writer and pastor said, he invites us to so let us enter the story one more time. In this present season of Advent, let us experience the the infant's Advent in the past and so make ourselves ready for the Advent of Lord of glory in the future. You see, we have an advantage that Simeon didn't. He got to see this baby's birth. But through the gospel writers, we get to not only watch the baby Jesus being born, but we get to witness his life, his death, and his resurrection. In our anticipation, our Advent doesn't end at Christmas. In fact, it begins anew at Easter as we celebrate our Savior and our King. And as we celebrate Christ's birth again, once again this Christmas, let's join with Simeon and celebrate Jesus as baby and king. And let's, tis- let's anticipate his coming into our lives today and in the year to come as we await his ultimate triumph as a wise and powerful king who will one day bring peace and wholeness to our world. Would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you that you sent Jesus into our world. We thank you that you were a promise keeper and that you spoke those words of hope and then ultimately then you fulfilled them through the sending of Jesus to rescue the nation of Israel and to rescue us. And we thank you that we can celebrate that again, once again this Christmas. And we would pray that we would celebrate Jesus as both baby and as king. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.